I'm Indy Nidell. This is a Time Goes World War II public service announcement. In the comments, we often see comments expressing curiosity or even dismay as to why China, one of the major allied powers, has not featured prominently in our weekly episodes for quite some time. One of our interns, Will, decided to clarify that on Twitter, and I thought his post was so good that it deserved a wider audience right here on the channel. Maybe we should put up a picture of Will. There he is. Okay, so we've seen a lot about the U.S. island hopping and Stillwell fighting with the Chinese in Burma recently. But what's been happening in China for the past few years? As Sparty and I often discuss, the Pacific War has been raging on, and the Japanese have been put on the defensive in Burma and in the South and the Central Pacific. But as of this current date, early 1944, there has not been much change on the main front line in China since 1940. To clarify, there has been fighting over these four years, but frontline movement has been functionally absent. There are considered to be 22 major engagements of the Second Sino-Japanese War. We have covered all that have occurred up to this point from September 1939. These battles, like the one at West Hubei in 1943, which had five-figure casualties for both sides, are almost reminiscent of World War I. Massive casualties, and huge numbers of soldiers, but little to no frontline change. So what exactly caused this? The key here is geography. China is huge. The Japanese have stretched their forces across the Pacific while trying to hold China. Japanese gains in China have also mostly been limited to the North China Plain, whereas the ROC has retreated to the jungly and mountainous interior. Early on, Japan resorted to taking China's major ports to cut off Allied aid, which is why on every map you see regarding this period, there are those small disconnected Japanese occupations. They've been trying to even out the front where they can and air bombing Chongqing. While the Japanese had the capacity to maintain their China front while invading all of Southeast Asia in 1941 and 1942, even by 1943, cracks were beginning to show. Between January and July of 1943, the Japanese were pushed back along the entire China front. By 1944, something has to give. Either the Japanese need to fully commit to their Chinese invasion, or they abandon most of China to focus on the Pacific. Whether or not they would or could succeed at either, we will have to see as the war progresses week by week. I do hope this clarifies that we are not ignoring China in the least. It really is the case that not much military movement usually happens there on a weekly basis. To find out about the many things that happened in China before this war and after the previous world war, you should check out our Between Two Wars series. There we go into great depth on all of that, including the Second Sino-Japanese War. It is thanks to the Time Ghost Army that we can do all of this, so if you have not already, then join the Time Ghost Army at timeghost.tv or patreon.com. See you next time.